Hello everyone, today I wanted to show and somewhat explain to you a little side project I've been working on related to both 3D printing and aviation physics. And yes, there has been a lot going on lately, founding my own startup, designing a completely new type of 3D printer, designing a new sundial, making a 3D design service and so on, but I'll make other videos about that specifically. Today I just really wanted to go a little bit more into detail on this specific project and since it's somewhat aviation related, it might also be a bit more interesting to the kinds of channel regulars here. And while it's not quite the same and I'm still getting back to that, it might even be uh, more close to a uh, basic aviation or spaceflight physics explanation than just an event announcement. So what I've been working on and what is currently more of a very detailed idea that I'm slowly putting into a detailed concept and then starting to build, but what's currently mostly a mathematical calculation is a concept for a new type of ornithopter that is a flying machine that flies by flapping its wings similar to an insect or bird or really there's a lot of ways this can work, there's a lot of different ways this can work, so that is a very, very broad category with not too much detailed terminology about this. Uh, different types of ornithopter can be as different as an airplane is from a helicopter, but they'll still both be called ornithopters. And there's a good reason for that, because really ornithopters don't have that great an application. Uh, for the most part, it's just not very practical or very useful compared to a fixed wing or rotary wing design. I mean, for the most part, a flapping wing is basically like a rotary wing, but it has to accelerate back and forth all the time. So really the main purpose of an ornithopter over a helicopter is really mostly just for fun or for challenge or because it's cool and there are very very few advantages or applications and it's hard to scale up because of the extreme structural loads on the constantly accelerating wings. That said there are a few advantages to it and a few cool things you can do with it and so I wanted to build an experimental ornithopter or maybe even something that you could uh, sell as a sort of toy kit or a sort of RC model. But unlike the previous tiny ornithopters, this one shouldn't just hover around uncontrolled or fly like a weirdly propelled airplane, but rather fly and perform at least remotely comparable to a uh, RC helicopter or a uh, aerobatics RC helicopter and be able to carry some payload like a mid-sized camera for a somewhat notable duration of battery life so it actually might have some kind of use case. Now today I've already uploaded a little animation of the uh, driving mechanism and I have previously uploaded a few uh, wing profile aerodynamic simulations but uh, before explaining that I'll run down the rough stats. The idea would have a wingspan of roughly 80 centimeters the model itself would be about 500 grams, including battery, motor, the mechanisms, the control electronics and so on, but uh, no camera or payload. Although you could add a very tiny camera that wouldn't add much weight. So the, the empty model would be about 500 grams with a battery flight time of maximum one hour if you just gently hover around, if you uh, pull some harder maneuvers or actually uh, actively fly around. That would probably decrease to half an hour or so if you carry a heavy payload. It should be able to uh, carry an additional 500 grams of payload and still maneuver somewhat uh, practically, not just carry the weight but also have uh, enough access thrust to actually climb and move forward and backwards and uh, when uh, descending slow its descent and hover again. And without payload it should even be able to pull some uh, relatively crazy stunts comparable to uh, like aerobatic or sea helicopters since while it's much more efficient uh, right side up it could hypothetically even fly upside down and accelerate out of hovering with about 3 G's. 
Most of the mechanical or aerodynamical parts would be 3D printed out of a carbon fiber reinforced PET G, which isn't quite as strong as proper carbon fiber co compounds, but uh, stronger than normal 3D printed plastic. Except for a few very simple high performance parts, as well as of course uh, things like motors, electronics, servos. The design would have four wings, each of them are flapping slightly offset compared to each other and uh, that is uh, the uh, deeper point uh, I'll explain at the end of this video as to what pattern they uh, flap in. But essentially they flap back and forth and work a bit like a helicopter rotor blade or wing as they move through the air they produce lift. Now the funny thing is actually due to this uh, wing profile they wouldn't actually have to uh, pitch up or down or angle back or forth. Uh, as you can see this profile I've analyzed at different angles of attack and there is actually a symmetric profile that is a, a back forth symmetric profile not an up down symmetric profile a back forth symmetric profile that produces lift at an angle of attack of zero. So you could just wildly move that back and forth without tilting it and produce lift. But that's not the most efficient way and also you wouldn't have any control if you don't tilt it obviously. But the fact that it can produce some lift without pitch or without tilting does make the whole thing a bit easier and take a bit of stress off the mechanism. The actual pitching of the wings would be done by small servo motors without an additional mechanism like a thrush plate or something, which is not the most efficient way to do it, but a very interesting way, a somewhat challenging way, and it does give you some abilities, some possibilities that you otherwise wouldn't have, so I wanted to try that out. The idea is that, while it sounds crazy, actually servo motors have gotten so good nowadays that Theoretically, you could build a helicopter without a swash plate nowadays. You could just build a very fast servo motor into each rotor blade and pitch each rotor blade up and down actively over each rotation of the rotor using a position sensor and a servo motor that just pitches up and down with cyclical pitch instead of using the swash plate mechanism to do that as in a normal helicopter nowadays where the servo is just uh, fixed for one stick position and the swash plate mechanism translates that into the blade pitching up and down over one rotation. Instead you have a servo that constantly moves back and forth as the wings flap. Now that does mean that you get somewhat stressed little servos and you might need an additional spring mechanism to uh, like halfway support those as they move back and forth but it means you have a lot more control over the pitch cycle of one wing it doesn't just have to be a sine function you can uh, change the pitch during one stroke and during each tiniest part of a stroke so you can actually do such complicated patterns where you not only have a collective pitch and cyclical pitch as you would have with a helicopter rotor, but instead you can change pitch up and down more quickly, thus manipulating the induced drag of your wing that during different phases of the wing stroke and thus create additional thrust. So actually this kind of design could have... Uh, like six degrees of freedom control where you can move forward actually by directly shoving your machine forward rather than uh, pitching forward and using lift to move forward. So that will be one feature that I'll implement here just to see if it's useful in some way. This will here also be the yaw function. So to, to translate basic helicopter controls into this model in order to uh, pitch up and down, obviously you just increase the amount by which the wings pitch uh, with each stroke so that you basically have collective pitch. For cyclical pitch or for roll and pitch you can just uh, increase or decrease the pitch on the wings that are further left or further right or further forward or further backward. Additionally for the uh, pitch axis you can tell each servo motor to slightly change the pitch curve of the wing so that while the wing is further forward in its stroke it has more pitch and when it is further back it has less pitch and so your whole machine will tilt backwards. 
And now the really clever thing about this servo actuation is that you can have a different amount of pitch on your wing when it is moving forward or on one half of its stroke than when it is moving backwards on the other half of its stroke. And the average of these two is going to decide how much lift your wing produces overall, but this creates more induced drag or less induced drag depending on which way your wing moves. And so you can get a net thrust forward or backwards. And by controlling this individually for the left and right wings, you can get a yaw axis. Now to the actual motor and drive as the actual powering motor behind this, I was thinking of a 130 watt motor which would be geared down to about 900 rpm or 15 rotations per second which is slow enough for the whole thing not to tear itself apart and fast enough to efficiently produce lift. Also since the uh, wing stroke cycle uh, always has some wings in the back, some wings in the front, they don't all move forward or backward at the same time. So it kind of averages out and together with this rpm you get a relatively stably flying thing that doesn't wobble back and forth too much. And now we get to the actual optimization of that wing stroke cycle. The thing is, you ideally want to conserve energy. You want to conserve the energy of the wing's speed, that kinetic energy, so that your motor only has to provide the power for the actual aerodynamic forces and the actual thrust and lift on the vehicle and doesn't have to power the constant acceleration back and forth of these wings. Now per conservation of energy that is of course possible. If you speed something up and slow it down again repeatedly you are not expending any net energy but of course every mechanism has a limited efficiency and if you do it stupidly that efficiency can very well approach zero so that your motor has to provide the energy to speed up your wing with every stroke again and again and that would be a very powerful and heavy motor. Instead, we want to recycle the energy from one wing slowing down to speed up another wing. There are a few things that can help you with that, like a flywheel or the uh, inertia of the motor itself, but that's not really efficient or practical. So ideally, you want to optimize your wing stroke cycle so that one wing is always speeding up while at the same time the other wing is slowing down so that bearing a bit of efficiency loss, you can directly translate that energy and reduce the additional energy the motor needs to speed up your wings every time. Now I've played around with a rather detailed numerical model of how the wing mechanism actually affects the movement of the wings, what kind of function that wing movement is. It's not exactly a sign function, but for simplicity and for the explanation, it's roughly speaking a sine function. So the obvious first move is to take two wings and uh, phase shift them or offset them by 90 degrees so that one is always standing still on the top or on the bottom of the sine function while the other one is moving fast, which in turn means that one is speeding up while the other one is slowing down. Now the thing is, surprisingly, that doesn't mean that your overall power output just uh, cancels out to zero. It is reduced quite a bit, but these curves don't quite match up. They're not as symmetric as you might intuitively expect. Because this is a little bit more complicated than a sine function, and because you're actually cutting the sine function in half, so despite it being symmetric, it's not a matching up function that just cancels out when you phase shift it. It gets reduced, but there's still some noise essentially left. But you can reduce the amount of torque, the peak torque you need, by a factor of almost five. So that is kind of good. And now the interesting thing is that this noise actually, again, isn't exactly a sine wave, but it looks roughly like a sine wave, and its frequency has actually increased by a factor of two. So... If we want to add a second pair of wings to make it four wings, then we want to offset that pair to the first pair, but this time by 45 degrees, not by 90 degrees, as you might intuitively think with a typical like four-stroke engine. 
So you ideally have two 90 degree offsets which are in turn offset to each other by 45 degree and then you can flip it around to make it an actual practical design and that's how you get the design that I made. You still need some additional torque for speeding up and slowing down the blade. There's also some numerical inaccuracy here but you can see that it somewhat flattens out and you need much less additional torque. That together with the inertia of the motor should, despite mechanical friction, still be enough to carry on the motion of the wings without wasting much more energy than you already need for just thrust and propulsion. Of course that animation is not a final version, it's just a, a first test of the mechanical geometry of the different levers. The shape of each part is still going to be optimized for weight saving and more mechanical strength. And then of course there would have to be a lot of testing and programming of the sort of fly-by-wire system and a, a basic gyro stabilization. Overall there might still be a lot of minor changes but generally that is the idea behind one of many side projects I'm currently working on and probably the one that I thought you might find most interesting. And yes, while this does not scale up too well and while it isn't incredibly practical, it is hypothetically possible to build this into a sort of backpack that you could wear and fly around with, although that would be pretty expensive. Anyway, that's it for today. If you have any questions about this or questions about physics and spaceflight and aviation in general or any requests for videos, leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.